Hello, this is Mrs. Howard, and today we're going to take a look at energy transfer using a simulation. So here on your notebook page, you'll see a link for the simulation, and to get started, you just click on that link. And then you're going to see two choices, intro or systems. Go ahead and click on systems to get the sim set up. The last thing you need to do is just make sure you have the check mark next to energy symbols. So on our notebook page, our first step is to complete a note and notice section. In this step, you're going to be encouraged to play with the simulator. Take a look at all the different components. So as we look at the sim, we can see three different sections. The first section has four choices, and as you click on each of the boxes, the item above it changes. The next section has two choices, and then the last section has four choices. And each time as you click on one of those options, the item above it is going to change. Let's take a closer look at what I mean by that. The default mode shows a girl on a bicycle, yet if I click this water spout, I can turn the water spout on and add it to the system in place of the girl on the bicycle. And each time you add something to the system, you have the ability to turn it on and off. So the next item I can add is a sun, and I can change the amount of clouds in front of that sun. And then finally there's a teapot, and I can change the amount of heat added to that teapot. In the middle section of the system, you have two choices. The first one is a generator, and then the second one here is a solar panel. Finally, in the third section of the system, you have the choice of a container of water, an incandescent light bulb, a fluorescent light bulb, and an oscillating fan. As you explore the system, it's going to be very important that you notice up in the upper right hand corner the forms of energy. Because when you turn something on in the system, you're going to see some E's appear. So what you really need to notice is that those E's stand for different forms of energy. The gray is mechanical, the blue is electrical, the red is thermal, the yellow is light energy, and finally the green E represents chemical energy. So as you change a component in the system, you'll want to observe what types of energy are flowing or coming out and moving to other portions of the system. And as you make these observations, you're going to want to record them in your notebook in the note and notice section. Phrase each observation as an if-then statement. In other words, if I change it to a tea kettle, then what happens? And as you're writing your if-then statements about your observations, be sure to mention the forms of energy represented by the E's in the simulator. And write those note and notice statements here in your notebook. We're now going to move on to the modeling section in your notebook. Here, we're going to set the simulator up as you see below with a bicycle, the generator, and the light bulb. So to do that, click the simulator link and then click Systems. Again, make sure you have energy symbols selected. In our notebook, it shows us that we're doing a system with a bicycle, a generator, and an incandescent light bulb. So you want to make those selections in the simulator and then observe. Observe what happens to the energy in this system. And then drag and drop the E's into this diagram or model of the system to reflect what you're observing. For the part two section, we're going to be modeling a unique system that you create. So you're going to be setting up your own system. As you can see on the bottom of the page, there are icons that represent the different features of the simulator. You have to decide what you want to model. In my case, I've selected the faucet, the generator, and the incandescent light bulb. After I've picked which components of the simulator I want to model, I go ahead and click on the simulator. Make sure you've selected systems and that the energy symbol is checkmarked. As you look at this simulator with your customized setup, observe the movement of the energy throughout this system. Then go back to your notebook page and model where the energy is in each part of this system. You can drag and drop these E symbols into the spaces to represent the energy movement. The final section of the notebook that we're going to take a look at is the true and false section. You may need to use the simulator to help you answer the questions. So read each statement and then determine whether or not it is a true statement or a false statement. If you determine it to be true, then just delete the F for false. If you determine the statement to be false, then delete the T for true. Do this for each statement on the page. 
When you're finished, hopefully you'll have a better understanding about how energy transfers throughout a system.